Pokemon Pearl. What a great regional dex, huh? Check out all the fire types. Oh, yeah. Well, let's put that encounter variety to the test by trying to beat the game with just Pokemon that start with the letter K. We've got some great Pokemon like... Oh, yeah, I see why this isn't a full-length video now. Okay, so where do we start? Our starter, I guess? Now, none of the three Sinnoh starter lines feature any K Pokemon, unless Torterra is spelled like this, so it shouldn't matter which one we pick, right? Wrong. Turtwig is the best choice for us, since one of our two encounters is a Psychic type who can outspeed in one shot our rival's future Monferno and Infernape. We meet the Professor, get shown around town by Dawn, and now it's time to get our first encounter. Krikatot isn't a great Pokemon, and Krikatoon isn't that much better, but we need the IVs to be in the right range to make this run even kind of possible. I decided that the IVs need to be in this range to like even stand a chance moving forwards. Let's see how long this takes me. Twenty three HP, fourteen attack, nineteen defense, sixteen special attack, seven special defense, and a perfect thirty one speed. Those IVs work out to a hidden powered grass, which is exactly what we need for this challenge. This is our ga this is our girl, the girl of prophecy. Rare candies turn Cricketot into Cricketoon, and we get to Jubilife City, home of one of the most important TMs in the game, at least for this run, hidden power. Krikatoon has access to a grass type move for the rock type gym now, so this should be hypothetically possible. Barry isn't worth talking about yet, so let's move on to our last encounter. In the grass of Route 203, we grab an Abra who has pretty solid IVs, but does have a minus special attack nature. But it's holding a twisted spoon. We need Kadabra to be our main attacker here, since unlike Krikatoon, Kadabra is actually decent. But since we won't get our Kadabra until after the first level cap, we need our musical bug to carry us through Rourke. Rourke's team has one real problem, Cranidos. Since we reset for certain stats, his lead Geodude and Onyx literally don't matter at all. Krikatoon is fully evolved and still has better stats than most first stage Pokemon. So that's two outspeed KOs with hidden power. Cranidos can be a problem, but since our Krikatoon has 31 speed, we actually outspeed here and take a two shot KO with hidden power, while Cranidos just uses Leer. One badge, but Let's be real, that was never going to be the hard one. The level cap is up to 22 now, so Abra can evolve into Kadabra, and we've got a full team for the run. We stop Team Rocket, but that's pretty easy, and now we're in Floroma Town. Here we've got another challenge, Commander Mars. This one is a little tricky. We don't have access to great moves or items yet, so we're going to have to take some risks. Her lead Zubat does go down to a super effective confusion from Kadabra, but her ace Perugly won't go down so easily. We need to hit three confusions to KO, meaning we need to risk a crit on Perugly's second scratch, but we stay unpunished. First Team Galactic Commander down. We head through the forest, escorting Cheryl along the way, and just like that, we're in Eterna City. Here we can fight for our second gym badge against Gardenia. This is probably our best matchup of the entire run. We've got evolved Pokemon that can do super effective damage to all the Pokemon on Gardenia's team. So let's not waste some time. Cherubi can't really touch Krikatoon, and it's going to let Fury Cutter charge up its power. Second up is Turtwig, and it gets spared after our second Fury Cutter misses, but that does waste a potion from Gardenia. I used that opportunity to get a swap into Kadabra for free, assuming Turtwig would do less damage than Roserade. Two Confusions bring down our chosen starter, and the ace Roserade is last. A single Confusion isn't enough for the KO, but the AI just used Poison Sting instead of a more powerful move, securing us the fight. One more confusion brings down Roserade, and we've got two gym badges. Let's keep it going. We grab the Thief TM for some type boosting items later on, and travel to Hardhome City, home of the fifth gym, and the location of our first real battle with Barry. We get to see here how easily Kadabra folds this guy over here, as Twisted Swoon boosted Psybeam gets a one-shot KO on Starly, Weasel, Monferno, and Roselia. I'll touch on Barry every time we fight him, but he doesn't even get a Staraptor till the Elite Four, so it'll be pretty quick. Whoa, check it out, Veilstone City, home of the TM shop that we're gonna abuse. My personal rule is that if I'm using rare candies to save time anyways, I can also sell them to save time grinding money. I like playing the game, not mashing A against low level wild Pokemon. Anyways, we grab some TMs here like Psychic for Kadabra and some hidden powers, letting us shuffle around our move slots without losing any options. 
our next two gyms have this same level cap, so we gotta go through and beat all the trainers in between so we can fight them back to back. Once we do that, we need to pick which leader we're gonna fight first, and that's gonna be Maylene. I need all the help I can get against Wake, so I wanna edge my Pokemon for that one. Pause. We head inside the boxing gym to challenge our third leader of the run. Maylene's team is pretty solid, but having a fast Kadabra definitely gives us an advantage here. Her lead Metatite might be neutral to Psychic Attacks, but since it can't really do any damage to us, we can set up a Reflect and then get a one-shot KO with Psychic. Machoke is next, but a Psychic also just gets a one-shot, this time a super effective one. That leaves Maylene with just her ace, Lucario. Since I set up a Reflect, Krikatoon can swap in to take minimal damage, then fire off a couple Brick Breaks for the KO. We only lost here to double crit, the first one being through the Reflect. We didn't get punished, so that's a pretty easy third gym badge. Time for Wake. Wake's team is a lot scarier than Maylene's. Both Gyarados and Floatzel have a dark type move that'll one-shot KO Kadabra, so we've gotta do a little bit of training. Krikatoon is exactly 1026 XP from level 31, and level two Starlies on Route 201 give one speed EV for 14 XP. That math works out to about 73 speed EVs before leveling up. Kadabra also needs 48 speed EVs, but her remaining XP only gets her about 38. Since I've used Kadabra a lot through the run though, she already has about 20, so getting her to 48 is no problem. That'll let her outspeed Floatzel, and without prep, we're ready for our fourth gym battle. Wake's lead Gyarados doesn't die to a shockwave from Kadabra, but since we're holding a Culberberry, the AI sees Brine as doing the most damage, leaving our Psychic type at about half. Since it didn't get the one shot and Wake only has super potions, we can actually freely set up a light screen before getting a KO on the next turn with another shockwave since Gyarados didn't get healed to full HP. Floatzel is out second with super effective Pursuit. Since the AI calculates damage without the switch out boost and it knows that I have a Culberberry, it still thinks Swift is gonna do the most damage here, so I can safely swap into Krikatoon. She wins that 1v1 and leaves Wake with only one Pokemon left. The problem is that our Hidden Power Grass actually doesn't get the one shot here, so we've gotta dodge another crit, cause it's gotta be a high roll, it's gotta hit the 75% accurate slam and get a crit. The AI did just roll Mud Bomb damage instead, so we're all good to secure the KO on the next turn. We've got through our toughest challenge so far, and let's see how far this run can actually go. We fight Barry again after this, but it goes the exact same as before, except this time, Buizel uses Aqua Jet to get a little bit of damage on Kadabra. Still a piece of cake though. We move some Psyducks, chat up an old granny, get some really powerful sunglasses, and head back to Hard Home City for our fifth gym battle. Fantina is a little scary since Ghost type hits Kadabra for super effective damage, but the choice spec should even the playing field here. Her lead Driftblim can't stand up to a spec Shadow Ball from Kadabra, and her Miss Magius just used Magical Leaf instead of a Shadow Ball that would have killed if it crit. Thanks to that, another Shadow Ball brings down Fantina's ace, and last up is Gengar. This frail Ghost type gets outsped in one shot with another Shadow Ball, and that's five gym badges for us. How many times did I say Shadow Ball? It felt like a lot. Jeez. Anyway, let's keep it rolling. Candlelight City, home of another berry fight and the sixth gym leader, Byron. Let's check in again on our good old, and his whole team's wiped out. Sorry, Barry. I wonder if Byron's gonna be any harder. This might be the first time I've ever said this, but Byron is actually a little tough here. We don't have any great answers for steel Pokemon since we've got a combined total of one fire and ground move available to us, and it's sunny day. On the bright side, Byron's lead Bronzor just gets rolled by two X Scissors from Krikatoon, and then his ace Bastiodon comes out. Between the last few gym battles, I maxed out Krikatoon's attack EVs, so a few Brick Brace can handle the Sinnoh Fossil. Iron Defense did make this a little awkward, but we got the job done. Third up and last for Byron is Steelix, which is a great Pokemon to test out our new strategy on. Krikatoon uses Parish Song to put Steelix on a timer, protects on the next turn, and then swaps into Kadabra on an Ice Fang. From here, one more protect seals Steelix's fate, winning us a clean sixth gym badge. Somehow, we've only got two badges left before the Elite Four, with only these two freaks on our team. We meet up with the Twin Leaf Town Gang, survive an earthquake, and get sent out to beat up the Galactic Commanders. First up, Commander Saturn. His lead Kadabra loses to our Kadabra thanks to the speed EVs and the choice specs, and Saturn sends out Bronze or second. I swap into Krikatoon, but it starts spamming Iron Defense, so I just use Parish Song to force it to swap out. This gives us a free swap into Kadabra as Saturn sends out his ace, Toxicroak, which is conveniently four times weak to Psychic. That's a pretty easy KO, and now Bronzor is back, so Krikatoon just needs to brute force her way through this one. She finally gets the KO after a few X Scissors, and that's one down, 
two to go. Mars is up next over at Lake Verity. Her lead Golbat gets diffed by Kadabra, and her ace Perugly comes out next. Krikatoon resists the incoming feint attack, so after shaking off a Hypnosis with a Lumberry, a couple Brick Breaks bring down the big cat. Last up is another Bronzor, but Krikatoon can handle it again with a few X Scissors. Off to Lake Acuity. We trek through the snow, find the entrance guarded, and head into Snowpoint City. Here we've got our seventh gym battle, this time against Candice and her Ice types. She leads with Snover, who sets up the annoying hail, but that's all it can really do. As an X Scissor from Krikatoon gets a one shot KO. Metacham is second, but it also can't really do a whole lot to Krikatoon. It spams Detect for a little bit, but two X Scissors clean up Candice's Ice type. Sneasel is third, but a held Chilean Berry reduces the massive damage from Slash. So a four times super effective Brick Break can secure Krikatoon's third KO of the battle. Last up is a Bomb of Snow, which suffers from its part Grass type. With max attack EVs, an X Scissor gets a one-shot KO, making Krikatoon go 4 for 4. That's the 7th Gym Leader down, and it's time to wrap up the Team Galactic storyline. Let's check on Barry again. How's he... Oh, you lost to that? Come on, man. You're making me look bad now. Let's see if he redeems himself while we start to bring down Team Galactic. We take on Cyrus at the HQ, and he still doesn't have evolved Pokemon yet, so this one's not too bad. Murkrow barely survives an X Scissor, but... A Dropek doesn't KO thanks to a Koba Berry, letting Krikatoon finish it off. Golbat is second, but our Psychic type holding the choice specs seals the deal with that one before I can even finish the sentence. Last is Sneasel, so Krikatoon does need to risk a crit, but we stay unpunished. As we get a KO with super effective Brick Break. Iris is done for now, but he's going to be a whole lot harder pretty soon. We travel up Mount Coronet and find our biggest challenge yet on top of Spear Pillar. First, we need to take on Mars and Jupiter in a double battle with Barry, and then we need to fight Cyrus right after, without changing our items, moveset, or team order. This one isn't going to be easy, but let's see what we can do. The Mars and Jupiter battle is going to need a little bit of luck to make it through. I lead with Kadabra for later, and then switch into Krikatoon, looking to start taking down one side of the field. We bring down Mars's Bronzor first, and then her Perugly comes out next. That's not a problem for Kadabra though, since with the choice specs, a neutral psychic can actually get the KO here. Mars sends out her Golbat after that, which is a uh, choice. That's Mars down, and now it's a 2v1. We aren't safe yet though, because Skunk Tank will run over my entire team if we're not careful. Since Barry has his Munchlax out, I've got literally no support at all. To solve this, I swap into Krikatoon, then use our Parish Song strategy to force out Munchlax. Jupiter switches into Golbat, and Barry swaps into Infernape. So now I have a real Pokemon to help me out. Psychic from Kadabra brings down Golbat and Jupiter sends out Bronzor next. That's an easy KO for Infernape as I swap into Krikatoon. The ace is last and I don't really want to fight this, so I just protect to let Infernape deal with this one. Just when I think I'm out of the woods, Infernape uses Punishment instead of Close Combat here, but Jupiter crit Berry Starter instead of mine so I breathed a real sigh of relief. Staraptor comes in and finishes off the fight and that's our first battle done, but can we beat the second one? I'm going to be real with you guys, I'm going to need the Nuzlocke gods on my side here. We need some rolls, some crit dodges, and some good move choices from the AI. Let's see what we can do. Cyrus leads with Honchkrow, which is awkward, and I lead with Kadabra. With the choice specs, Shockwave is a 75% chance to get the KO here. F Kadabra is down to the yellow, and now that Weavile is out second, I think we're kind of cooked. The AI rolled Brick Break, so switching into Krikatoon gives us a chance to get the KO with Brick Break after dodging a crit. But now we've got low HP on both our team members and a Crobat standing in front of us. I need to take the risk here and I swap into Kadabra. We're still in this, as long as we don't self hit. Fuck. That seals the fate of this run, as Kadabra goes down to a bite from Crobat, and at this point, I don't even want to give Cyrus the satisfaction. I reset it right there, and we've officially failed a Pokemon Pearl Hardcore Nuzlocke with only K Pokemon. Thanks guys so much for watching this one. Different kind of video this month, but school is ridiculous there for a minute and I thought this run was pretty cool and I didn't want to make a full video out of an attempt that didn't even get 8 badges. Hope you guys liked it. If you want to see more of these shorter videos on attempts that don't make it all the way, let me know in the comments or by liking the video, then maybe I can get more than one video a month out. Follow me on TikTok, buy me a coffee if you feel like it, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.